from a station working for you. This is WRTV News at 530, streaming now. Now at 530, separating kids from screen time, it's not always easy or possible. How making it a priority could help protect their eyesight. And we'll go back 27 years and remember what made this a record-setting day in Indiana. It's not one Kevin and many Hoosiers will forget. Chris. Topping our lineup, school choice is getting new attention during the pandemic. What we could see going forward with the options parents have for where their children go to school. You aren't supposed to be charged for COVID tests, but it is still happening. And one woman's lesson we will tell you after she refused to pay and fought to get her balance down to zero. And with so many people continuing to work from home, it is causing new anxieties. My experts say it's normal and how to best address what you're feeling. Now first at 530, eye doctors are seeing more school-aged kids dealing with nearsightedness. It's especially been a problem with children spending hours on their devices during e-learning necessi that's necessary by the pandemic. Our Kelsey Anderson has more on what you can do to protect your child's eyesight. Between cell phones, video games, iPads, and now virtual learning, experts say that children have the visual jobs of computer programmers and are now seeing the need for glasses a lot sooner. It was our own little eyeball pandemic before COVID ever hit. Dr. Katherine Schutz has been an optometrist for 21 years. She specializes in pediatrics. Uh, we've been calling it the myopia pandemic and definitely nearsightedness is hitting kids at younger ages and the progression is a lot faster than what we've seen in previous decades. So not only are more of the world's children becoming more nearsighted, it's happening more quickly. She says there are two things you can do to help your child's vision. The first, spending time outside. If kids are outdoors two hours a day, it prevents the genetic component of two nearsighted parents. So we know that kids who have two parents who you know are wearing glasses for nearsightedness, they have like a 70% chance of becoming nearsighted. But if they're outdoors, you can lower that to almost nothing, which is uh, impressive. The second thing is exercising your eyes, she says, by taking breaks from looking at your devices. Our rule is the 20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, look at something 20 feet away for a minute or two. Um, that's, that's ideal. It's not an easy habit to get into, but it is very, very helpful in terms of reducing strain um, and just really flexing the visual system so that's not looking, you know, a screen right in front of you all day, every day. Dr. Schutz recommends parents bring their children in for a baseline eye exam by age five. We really don't want kids in glasses. I know that seems like that cannot be from an eye doctor, but my job is to keep kids as low on the prescription um, so that they're as least dependent as possible. Now, as far as blue light blocker glasses go, Dr. Shute says she does recommend them to protect the eye, almost like a sunscreen and to level out those melatonin levels. But she does say that these will not help in the progression of a child's eyesight. Working for you, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. And the shield of clouds is being pulled over central Indiana, but from this view, from the Motor Speedway, the Pagoda camera, you can at least see the sunshine that still exists well south of Indianapolis, but then the veil of steel gray stratus clouds now visible in Indy. 38 Martinsville, 37 in Greenfield and Fishers, not much of a temperature range because of all the clouds. Gary, Indiana's at 30, 33 in Fort Wayne, southern end of the state, temperatures in the upper 40s. As we go through the evening and tonight, our snow shower chances will increase, especially north and east of Indy. Any accumulations would be very light. We'll all have wind gusts over 20 miles per hour. There are the flurries and snow showers developing and continuing to drop to the south and east. Tomorrow morning, we're back to some sunshine. We need it. Temperature 27 at noon. Afternoon high, quite cool. We'll stay in the lower 30s with partly sunny skies and a cold west wind. Chris? We are now less than 24 hours away from Joe Biden being sworn in as the new president of the United States. Biden and Kamala Harris will be sworn in after noon Eastern tomorrow. Chief Justice John Roberts will administer the oath of office to Biden and Justice Sonia Sotomayor will swear in Harris. Meaningful part there is Sotomayor is the first Latina Supreme Court justice and Harris will be the first woman, first black American and first South Asian American vice president. Instead of the traditional inaugural ball, Biden will take part in a televised celebration tomorrow night called Celebrating America. There's a new effort to designate a national day of remembrance for COVID-19 victims. I think it's, it's just 
heightens the sadness, I think, that, um, you know, these numbers are becoming even more anonymous. Now, when we first talked to Rebecca Heiss and Dermot Jevons, last April, they had launched MorningAmerica.org. Their goal is to put a face to everyone who lost their life to the virus and tell their story. They've got already almost 20,000 names added. The number of deaths in the United States is now around 400,000. And right now, there's no way for the United States to come together as a country around those devastating numbers unless we make a concerted effort as a population to provide a way to, for all of us to stop for a second and remember those we have lost. People like Richard Stubinger, who the hospital workers called Grandpa. He had hoped to live to 100 years old so he could be mentioned on the Today Show. but. He was mentioned on the Today Show only after his death at the age of 93. Then you have Kevin Clark, a Yale graduate who died at just 45 years old, and Lorena Borjas, an award-winning advocate for transgender and immigrant communities who became a U.S. citizen in 1990. If you've lost a friend or a family member, please share their story with us because we'd love to have a place where we can hear about the person you've lost. Anyone can submit a story of a loved one lost to COVID on the website morningamerica.org. You can also sign the petition for a National Day of Remembrance on March 7th. That is the day last year we crossed having 100,000 positive COVID cases. More to get to in our lineup. School choice is getting new attention during this pandemic. What we could see going forward with the options parents have for where their children go to school. Payments no interest for 12 months. Next week is National School Choice Week. President Trump signed a proclamation designating next week to the issue saying all Americans, no matter their family, income, deserve the opportunity to choose the best educational option for them. Next week, families across the country will attend more than 33,000 independently planned activities virtually to raise awareness about school choice and different opportunities in education. School choice is a broad term that refers to giving parents more options for where their children go to school. Different children thrive in different environments, and so it's important for families to have options to find the school that best meets their children's needs. Michael McShane studies school choice for the nonpartisan nonprofit group Ed Choice. He says people think of school choice as a set of policies that need to be passed, but that it's already really happening in the form of magnet, charter, and private schools. Micro schooling is another example of school choice that is getting more popular, and McShane says it's partly because the pandemic has opened the eyes of many parents to the need for more and different options. We're seeing these things, these hybrid homeschools, where children attend formal schools for part of the day, but then are homeschooled for part of the day. We're seeing more people just enrolling in more traditional homeschooling, which is another kind of longstanding school choice that exists there. He expects more parents to see a broader range of school choice options in the coming years. Most of the school choice happening today, McShane says, is informal and typically happens among the wealthy. People, generally people of means, are able to find a house zone for a good school or a good school district. And um, part of the sort of policy side of this is trying to make that more equitable. How can we even that out? Can we find ways to subsidize families to try and level that playing field some way? But Many advocates believe that school choice will become common with bipartisan support in the coming years, but those against school choice argue the idea does not guarantee equal opportunities for all students and that it will take funding away from already strained public school budgets. All right, ahead in our lineup, you are not supposed to be charged for COVID tests, but it is still happening. One woman's lesson after she refused to pay and she fought to get her balance down to zero. Dollar drain cleaning special. In Washington state, the governor is speeding up the vaccination process. The state now turning to Starbucks to help with vaccine distribution. Some employees will be working with the company's simulation modeling system to figure out how to speed things up. The state aiming to give out 45,000 doses a day. Grocery store Aldi is the latest to offer incentives for its employees to get the COVID vaccine. It says we'll give up to four hours of pay to those who get vaccinated. Aldi is currently working to get workers priority access to the vaccine. It also plans on creating vaccination clinics at its warehouses and offices. Well, it's been 10 months since most musicians have been able to perform in front of fans. 
It's been that long since any of us could see them live as well. For many musicians, performing is not only their source of passion, but it's their revenue. So we thought it was time to check in with some as we continue our series asking different groups of people an important question. Dan Grossman found some responded to the question, how are you doing better than you might think? Rarely do we pay mind to the sounds of our environment until they're arranged in harmony. If Johnny McMahon, Demi Dimitro, and Adrian Pottersmith, collectively known as the Velveteers, want a crowd these days. We did a live stream that was like eight different locations in really cool places in Colorado, and we had my dad <laughs> just record them all on his iPhone. The world must be their stage. Our social scene was through playing shows, so it was everything to us. Like most musicians, the pandemic took away their performances, their revenue, and their ability to connect with their fans. So when you ask how they're doing, <laughs> it's a difficult hand for any artist to be dealt. I know, the first time I get up in front of the orchestra to rehearse, I'm just gonna have to just take a breath and, and just say, welcome back. <laughs> It's going to be, I'm, I'm getting emotional now just thinking about it. Dan Levitt is a conductor for Inside the Orchestra, a group that plays immersive concerts for students so they can learn about the world of music. COVID has stopped those thousand person gatherings, but it's also reinvigorated Dan's love for composing, something he never had much time to do before. It's allowed me to, to, to give more focus on certain parts of my musical life that I uh, normally would be pulled in all kinds of directions and just I'm gonna wake up in the morning, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna write music all day long. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> for these three, it's allowed them to tap into their creativity performing online live streams in places that are no longer basements or warehouses and connect with a wider audience in the process. It's just been kind of a, a nice little breather. What are we fighting for? And the, the, just the change of, of things, while it's like really freaky at first, it's, it's really good because it forces you to do stuff that you wouldn't do otherwise. So ask them how they're so, doing and you'll find they've created their own harmony. I think, uh, most really, really good things are, are come out of places that are really uncomfortable. In a time that is anything but. I'm just hoping that when we get together again, it's just going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm Dan Grossman. A state lawmaker wants his colleagues to honor Indiana's big popcorn crop by making it the state's official snack. The bill by the bill by state senator Ron Grooms of Jeffersonville would designate Indiana grown popcorn as the Hoosier state's official snack. The bill says Indiana ranks second in the nation behind Nebraska in popcorn production. He says Hoosier farmers grow nearly 500 million pounds of popcorn every year. Kevin, I have a few favorite popcorn spots around here. Oh, I'm sure you don't have to butter me up. I'm, I'm all for this. <laughs> all right, cloud cover across central Indiana. Temperatures, they're in the low 30s in most spots. I do expect some snow showers to develop. That happens to be the view from DePaul University. There are the snow showers, northern Illinois. They're sliding to the south and east, and I think between, oh, probably 9 and 11, the most likely time, especially north and east of Indy, that we'll see some of these light snow showers, not expecting much in the way of accumulation. Cold west wind tomorrow, a mixture of clouds and sunshine, and the temperatures obviously staying on the cold side. Speaking of cold, today is a day that should be frozen in your memory. Our David James reminds you why. Very early this morning at the new Whiteland Sewage Treatment Plant, with the fresh snow cover below, the clear skies above, and the cold Arctic air surrounding this thermometer, it registered the Indiana all-time record low. I came in this morning at uh, 6.30, and uh, we normally take our readings at, at 8 o'clock. Uh, at that point in time, I checked it and uh, found our low reading was a uh, minus 36. From hundreds of daily weather records around the state, that broke the nearly 43-year-old record of 35 below. The cooperative uh, program has been uh, um, in, uh, activated uh, for over 100 years. Or, of course, it's a lot larger than it was 100 years ago, but uh, um, the Greensburg, the 35 below reading, 1951, was recorded by a cooperative weather observer. As a meteorologist, I think this record event deserves some kind of recognition, like maybe a plaque here at the new Whiteland Town Hall. 
But really, residents are taking this pretty much in stride. What was it? 26, 36? 36. Oh my gosh, and here I am out in it. Well, I'll tell you, it's better today than it was yesterday, because there's not that wind. So, I don't mind this at all. And then I, I know it's going to get warmer tomorrow, so that helps too. I was born and raised down here. I'm used to the cold winters. You know, it's a little colder than usual, but you just put up with it. But still, residents wouldn't mind sending the Arctic air to another zip code. From New Whiteland, Dave James, 6 News. How about that flashback to 1994 on this date, the all-time state record down in New Whiteland. Indy, by the way, hit 27 below zero. That's what has six inches of snow on the ground. Certainly helped that happen. Chris. For months now, we've been telling you about Americans being hit with surprise COVID bills. Bills for COVID tests that Congress mandated be covered by insurance companies. Chris Conti checked back in with one woman who has spent months trying to get her medical bills fixed and she eventually found success. They wait in line for hours. Across the country, COVID testing sites have become the place Americans are turning to to find out if they are sick. And while most are never charged for a trip like this, others have been hit with an unwelcome surprise. I mean, it was shocking, right? Back in May, Lori Delgado Witten uh, opened her mail to find a bill she never expected, totaling more than $3,000 for one single COVID test, a test that under federal guidelines was supposed to be free. I felt like they were ripping people off and they had sort of the perfect uh, way of doing it. Lori quickly learned that she'd be the only one advocating to fix this mistake. She spent hours on the phone with the hospital and her insurance company, and she did it for the thousands of other Americans who are being tested every day and receiving surprise bills. I was always the one sort of taking the lead to move it forward. The insurance company wasn't contacting me back. The hospital wasn't contacting me back. You know, any kind of follow up that was necessary, I had to do. This is a real problem. Michelle Johnson is a health care advocate. Her worry is that stories like Lori's might deter others from getting a COVID test at a time when the virus is raging. If we want people to get tested and we're saying that it's free, it has to be free. Speak up. Uh, the only way that wrongs can be righted is if we call people to accountability. Nearly eight months after first receiving that bill, Lori is finally free of any financial obligations. She even went so far as to report the issue to the Texas Attorney General where she lives. They are investigating dozens of other similar billing problems. It really was just about what's just and right. And um, at times I felt like I was constantly hitting my head against the wall that nobody seemed to care that, that this was happening. A warning to other Americans waiting in line to make sure this doesn't happen to them. I'm Chris Conti. Well, Chris, thank you. And changes are coming to the SAT. The College Board announced today it's dropping an optional essay. It's also getting rid of specialized tests on subjects like physics and world history that some schools had required. The College Board says the pandemic accelerated a process that was already underway to reduce demands on students. The Olympic Games in Tokyo are just six months out, but organizers have not unveiled plans to mark the events. Tokyo is still under an emergency order due to a COVID surge. 80% of people in Japan want the event canceled. It's unknown if that will happen because of the amount of money that's already been poured into the Olympics and also the amount of money that the International Olympic Committee could lose. Tonight's another shot at winning one of two really big lottery jackpots. Now, there are some big lines just across the Nevada border in California. You can't buy tickets in Nevada. Mega Millions up to $850 million, game's second largest prize ever. Tomorrow's Powerball drawing, $730 million. Both games, jackpots, have been rolling over since September. Now, finally in our lineup today, as so many people continue to work from home, it is causing new anxieties. Why experts say it's normal and how to best address what you're feeling. For just $199 a month. You may have seen those videos online of people coming up with ways to make sure their work computer is awake so their managers think they're working. It's funny, but that so-called hack actually comes from a very real feeling of paranoia. 
Working from home may have us feeling like we need to make sure our managers know we're working. We may experience work-related anxiety from other things like thinking people are judging our homes and video conferences or being paranoid about why our emails and messages are going unanswered. Experts say it's normal to experience these feelings since office interactions and dynamics have changed. People don't have as much of an opportunity to have uh, social interactions with their colleagues. There's no water cooler right when you're doing zoom meetings um at the same time oh yeah and, and since we are less likely to have those social interactions there's sort of just less grease on the wheels so they're grinding against each other a little bit more that's why dr david rosemarin says social interactions are important that can include things like a virtual happy hour or just having a video call in a hangout group you know it, it's uh it's just all the more important that we don't um, that we don't go into our own little bubbles and be only focused on our productivity uh, during a pandemic. We really need to band together and to uh, you know be human with each other. Some companies have shifted during the pandemic to make these water cooler hangouts happen. Experts say if you are experiencing significant anxiety for more than a month, it is time to see a mental health professional. But while most people recover from COVID, some of those people suffer long-term effects. Long haulers can suffer from extreme fatigue and brain fog, among other symptoms. Tomorrow, what new research is showing us about treatment for these COVID-related conditions. And a familiar forecast, some more snow showers around tonight into the early overnight. Temperatures steady in the 30s through 11 o'clock. Any accumulations will be light.